So indulge me once again, guys, because listen, if you want the free pick via video today, you got to get me sitting in a parking garage coming out yet another doctor's appointment. A third straight NBA complimentary winner yesterday as I gave you the Washington Wizards thanks to a furious fourth quarter comeback, getting the win and cover at home against the Atlanta Hawks. Problem is, I cashed in with the complimentary play, but saw my 15-dime best bet winner and my fourth straight NBA winner overall go down in flames as the Houston Rockets played absolutely no defense and were lucky to win straight up and withstand a magnificent effort from Russell Westbrook last night as they failed to cover and last night's uh, straight-up win against the Oklahoma City Thunder. But we live for another day, and we move forward. And I've got another complimentary NBA play going here tonight for your Thursday free selection. Now, listen, last night we had a split with the favorites and the puppies, but the dogs are still 10-6 and six against the spread overall because last night uh, we had, uh, actually we had the two and one performance last night, my correction there, because we had the Warriors minus Kevin Durant getting the double digit win and cover last night at home against the Portland Trailblazers. So the favorites had a winning night last night going two and one, but still the puppies are 10 and six in this first round of the postseason with four outright underdog winners. Uh, tonight, let's take a look at the game between uh, Memphis, or excuse me, Milwaukee and Toronto. The Bucks are one and a half point favorite at home. Uh, I do like Milwaukee in this contest. And listen, the Bucks have certainly done the job in this series, covering both, winning the first game outright. And in game number two, you know, they found themselves down early in that contest, but came back after falling down in the fourth quarter by double digits at one point, but coming back and making that a one-point game with a little under three minutes to play before succumbing uh, 106-100 as an eight-point dog on Tuesday night. The one reason that I'm not using the Bucks as my best bet, however, in tonight's contest is that Milwaukee really doesn't have any home court advantage at the Bradley Center, so to speak, because the fact is they were only five games over 500 on the season. Well, listen, that certainly counts when we come into the postseason. Now, Milwaukee is a one and a half point favorite, however, in this contest. And even though Toronto got its mojo back shooting wise in game number two, especially from long distance, going 14 for 29 with three pointers after a miserable five for 23 performance in game number one. I still think the Raptors have too many question marks. Yes, Kyle Lowry, uh, who... Um, coming into uh, game number two, was absolutely the worst active player with over 500 field goal attempts shooting-wise in the postseason, field goal percentage-wise, uh, among all active players, again, with over 500 field goal attempts uh, going into game number two. Yes, he had a nice game in game number two with 22 points, but one game does not erase the fact that he and his backcourt partner, DeMar DeRozan, are number one and number four in that all-time worst category. So you don't know what you're going to get, especially from the Raptors on the road here. Now, the Greek freak had an off night in game number two after a magnificent game in uh, game number one. Game number one, he was especially dynamite in the paint, going nine for 12 in game number one, only five for 14 as the defense for the Raptors collapsed on him uh, down low in game number two. Still had a nice all-around game with 24 points, 15 rebounds, and seven assists. What's really surprised me in this series is the contributions the Bucks have gotten from Greg Monroe. Not only defensively, which is not his fort, but offensively, he has really contributed. Uh, 18 points and four rebounds in game number two after that monstrous 14-point, 15-rebound performance in game number one. I just think that the Bucks they couldn't have asked for a better first-round opponent than Toronto, a team that they match up so well against. And I'm willing to lay the point and a half with Milwaukee in this contest because, again, Toronto shot well in game number two, 48.1% compared to Milwaukee's 41.4%. But I think those numbers even themselves out, if not turning around and giving Milwaukee a slight advantage since they are the home court team tonight. So I'm willing to lay the point and a half with Milwaukee. Now that San Antonio Memphis game, as I pointed out in yesterday's video report, two days ago video report, after the... Um, Grizzlies succumbed in uh, game number two, and their uh, head coach, David Fisdale, went nuts in the post-game uh, uh, pre press conference 
uh, going, uh, putting on that uh, theatrical performance, whining about the statistics, whining about the number of free throw attempts that the Spurs got, whining about the officiating, which earned him a $30,000 fine. It wasn't about game two. That theatrical performance was all about game number three. It was all about setting the tone. It was all about getting the officials' ears, getting their attention, getting the tone, and getting something done for game number three tonight. And mark my word, you're going to see a more closely called game. You're going to see more whistles going on San Antonio tonight. And I still don't know if the Grizzlies can win this game. That's the fact. You know, going into game number two, where I gave you San Antonio as the complimentary play, I said that after game number one, where Marcus Saul had a monstrous game with 32 points, and I didn't think the Saul was going to be able to replicate that performance, and he didn't, as he only had 12 points on four for 15 shooting. And that after Mike Conley had an awful game in game number one, I thought that Conley would come back, and he would certainly uh, do much better, because in game number one, he went from the midway point of the second quarter for the rest of the game without scoring. Well, he bounced back with 24 points, and Zach Randolph came back with 18 points. And they still couldn't get anything done. They scored the same number of points in game number two, 82 points, as they did in game number two, and or game number one. And they're shooting only 38.5% in the series. Five of the eight quarters in the first two games, they have been held to 20 points or less because the Spurs have done a great job at controlling the tempo in these contests. Now... I think a lot of people will probably jump on Memphis because, again, this is a do-or-die game. They're playing at home. They're going to rally around their coach. Hell, the Spurs have even, or the Grizzlies have even said that, you know, they would contribute to pay for their head coaches. Fine. Because Fisdale has fired up his team. He's fired up the fan base. And the Grizzlies did win both home court games here in the regular season. But, you know, the Spurs have won, what, uh, 10 straight in the postseason in this series. So I think it's an interesting game. The line was two and a half overnight. It's three and a half now. I think it's interesting. You know, uh, again, your official complimentary play is the Milwaukee Bucks. I would lean towards San Antonio in this contest. They've had no answer for Leonard, who is coming off, uh, what, uh, 37 points, 11 rebounds, uh, setting a career playoff high after matching his previous career uh, playoff high, you know, 32 points in game number one. He said 20 of 28 in the series, 28 of 28 at the free throw line. Uh, without Tony Allen, you know, Memphis has nobody to match up for him. And think about it. The Spurs rolled in game number two, even though LaMarcus Aldridge only had 11 points in the contest. They've rolled in the series, even though they've been getting nothing from their center position in terms of production. And the Spurs are a team that... Now that Tim Duncan's no longer there, it's not like they have to conserve their energy because they are a younger team. And they hardly had to exert much energy in game number one when most of their starters went no more than 32, 33 minutes. And game number two, they were up 26 points early. They watched that lead shrink to four points at one stage early in the fourth quarter before putting on the Jets and taking care of business once more. So again, I lean a little towards San Antonio there. But again, your official free play, I still like Milwaukee more than anybody else. And of course, my best bet tonight happens to be in the Cleveland, Indiana game. So that'll do it, guys. I wish you well, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow, hopefully sitting at my desk rather than in my car once more, getting you this video report. Good luck, everybody.